When memories come up, um, what is it that's triggering the memory? What is it that suddenly, you know, brings you back? And it can be so intact. And I think also often it's interesting that it's not visual. Visual is kind of the, the weakest one. It's usually, you know, a sound or a smell or a, or a touch of something that can um, evoke something really complete that maybe you haven't even thought about for years and years and years and brings you back to something. I am born in New York City in 1967, February 67, um, in what is uh, called Washington, the, the bottom of Washington Heights, 162nd Street. My parents arrived in New York five years earlier um, from Russia via Poland via Israel to New York. My father um, was a uh, political prisoner and early, I would say, um, before the dissident movement, uh, but dissident um, who was arrested at the age of 19 um, and um, sent to a gulag uh, in Norilsk in Siberia, where he was for almost five years. My parents met uh, in 1958. My father was released in um, 54, and he um, and my mother both were suffering um, from the situation of how Jews were treated in Russia. I think as a child I was both uh, fascinated by it and um, very attached to my parents, so trying to understand what their experience was, but it was almost like a, um, a, a dream world because it wasn't my lived experience. My lived experience was, you know, first my first five years we lived in, in Washington um, Heights in New York and then we moved to um, a very uh, established uh, suburb outside of New York called Chappaqua. So I had this very um, American, uh, New England, uh, normal environment that I was growing up in, you know. Um, and it was this sort of, like two, these two worlds, you know, I would um, on one level be this all-American kid and um, completely integrated, uh, you know, wanting my uh, Levi's jeans and my um, wool rich down jacket and all those kinds of things and then on the other side there was this kind of very um, exotic but uh, intimate world of uh, are, our, are our telephones being tapped? Um, what kind of, uh, we have to send pencils to Russia because they need uh, pencils. Each of the costumes um, gives a certain uh, symbolic um, representation. For example, the, the um, uh, conscientious worker, there's an, it, it's a kind of a, um, how do you call it, like a robe that has a hammer and a saw on it. So it's this kind of, you know, this, uh, uh, yeah, you get this sort of image of this, uh, Dutiful, dutiful worker uniform. Um, then this green and purple, little uh, kind of fine fabric, um, long robe. Some people have told me that also resembles um, these kind of uh, uh, um, robes of um, uh, priests. Um, uh, there is something very ceremonial about all of the costumes. So you get this kind of very symbolic uh, reading of each one. The tent is in the middle of the of this last room in the exhibition, and um, when you walk into the room, in 
um, the, all of the costumes are sort of almost like witnesses um, hanging on the walls surrounding this transparent, um, also very temporary, very light structure because the tent is um, made out of uh, chiffon. Um, so it's very, very light and, um, and clearly it can be dissembled and packed up into a suitcase and you can move on to your next um, destination. My, my family has, has you know, moved quite a, a lot in the beginning, you know, that, so that, that, that feeling of, um, of uh, being, having what you need with you and being able to take, you know, your essential belongings, having something that you can, you know, pack out and have a place where you feel protected and not have, you know, so I think that there's, um, The lightness, I think, in the tent is important to me in that it um, talks about that potential that we can, that we don't need something really um, ex expensive and heavy and strong with really thick walls to create a sense of, of solidarity. Um, we don't need to really, maybe things can be more porous where you can still set, have a sense of togetherness without necessarily having to lock other people out. I would say my approach is, is fragmented, but I wouldn't call it intentional because intentional um, implies that I have a choice. Um, and um, of course I do have a choice because, you know, as an individual, I could make up whatever story I want to, um, but uh, my interest is actually to discover, um, as opposed to um, to just make up. Uh, and my, and and my family history is fragmented. This is the first exhibition where I've actually put my own experience, life experience, into the exhibition. Um, whereas before I've focused on my parents' experience or um, Sammy Reindeer Herder's experience or Nenets, you know, other, other populations. Um, and so this is the first time where I've sort of kind of come forward into the stage. Um, and and that's also kind of, uh, yeah, it's released a lot of um, uh, things that I felt that I have needed to kind of put into a box and pack away. Um, but the, the box kept kind of coming forward and I kept needing to look into it. And, uh, yeah, this is not something that came easily to me to put myself in the center of uh, my art making. My, my own personal story in the center of my art making was not something that came easily to me. But, um, I, but, I, but I convinced myself to do it with the intent that through the process of kind of, you know, um, mythologizing or abstracting this, fam this history that I um, come from um, and, and turning it into, um, yeah, kind of a, a fairy tale that it um, opens up that people can also start uh, identifying themselves in aspects of their own experience in the story and actually start to uh, um, yeah, uh, be more elastic with their own, with their own experiences and, and reflect on them and, and see that it's, it's possible to, to take things that are frozen and, and melt them. I see the art space as um, the platform that I can most identify with as a, as a secular space that's open for um, and welcoming to anyone who wants to be there. There's nothing about um, an art space that says you're not included um, unless, you know, you, unless you 
for whatever reason feel uncomfortable in that space, if it's a class or a cultural reason, um, um, or maybe there are things in the space that you find offensive or boring, but in itself there's nothing that says, okay, you, um, if you're not this denomination or this religion, you can't come in. It's, it's open.